Hello people of YouTube, it's Deepak here, and welcome to DCS World 2.7.18, an Eagle Dynamics FA-18C Ornament Module. Welcome to Tutorial 17, Azimuth and Elevation Display. In a previous video we covered the Attack Radar Display, which is the standard B-scope available in the Hornet. Today we're going to cover its uh, associated display, the Azimuth and Elevation Display, which is very similar, however it has some additional functionalities and it provides a first person field of view with uh, azimuth being the kind of left and right scale on the display and the elevation actually being the, the top to bottom. So it doesn't display the range as a B-scope does. So you know, if you think about it, uh, a B-scope is effectively a top down view of your radar's view and the azimuth and elevation is a first person view. This display has the same hafu symbols as the attack radar does uh, with Hafu standing for Hostile, Ambiguous, Friendly and Unknown. Those symbols are split with the top half of the symbol being your own ship sensors and what they think the target is, and the bottom half being external sensors such as the data link. We're not going to cover the data link today however. Um, so let's uh, jump into the, the cockpit and let's uh, get set up with the azimuth and elevation display. Now, it's only available when you're in air-to-air -air master mode, so let's start by going into air-to-air -air master mode. It's displaying the FLIR on the left-hand side and the attack radar on the right. I'm actually going to go weapon select right to select the AMRAM there so that we don't have that noise all the time from the Sidewinder. And then we can go menu on the left-hand DDI, and we have the option at the bottom left here, azimuth and elevation. If I choose that, we then have the azimuth and elevation display up. So, uh, let's go ahead and actually adjust our radar a little bit here uh, on the right-hand side. I'm going to go to a uh, an azimuth of 60 degrees. Uh, we've got a range of, let's leave it on 40 just now actually, and we're on a two-bar scan. Now notice that the azimuth and elevation display has this yellow box, and that's the field of view of the radar. You'll note that as I change the settings on the attack radar, it changes the field of view uh, in the azimuth and elevation display. So that's quite a handy way of visualizing what um, what space your radar is currently scanning, which is quite nice. Um, so before we go any further, let's focus down on the azimuth and elevation display, and I will go through all of the symbology and the options here. So inside the main part of the display, like I said, uh, left to right is um, uh, azimuth. Uh, and the, the scan, the azimuth scan is shown here as the left and right sides of the yellow box and elevation is up and down again with the extents of the radar's current scan shown there uh, with the top and bottom lines of the yellow box. We have this option here called scale elevation. We can click that and that changes the actual scale of, of the elevation uh, with the top and the bottom angles being shown at the top right and bottom right corners. So this, this display is currently showing 30 degrees up and 30 degrees down. We can go all the way up to 70 and then all the way down to 5 and this, this effectively gives us a nice scale that we can use here in the radar display. Um, we have the dugout across the top as normal and then we also have this hexagon which shows the current field of view of the FLIR because this system integrates with the FLIR. In the top left we have the current submode that we're in. We're currently in the IFF and radar submode. So that means that everything that's displayed here, or all the controls uh, for that matter, are to do with the radar. And it also confirms what mode the radar is currently in. We're currently in range while scan. If we click this, we can go into the FLIR mode, and that allows us to control the pointing of the FLIR uh, with regards to currently selected targets. Let's flip back to IFF, radar, and RWS. Um, so, next thing to do is we'll go through the controls around the outside of the uh, radar display here. We've got single IFF. Uh, this actually currently doesn't do anything, but uh, the manual says that it should be possible to have a full or a single mode. In single mode, your IFF queries that are manually triggered will only do um, the currently selected IFF mode. In all, they would query with all uh, IFF modes. Uh, FOV toggles the display of the FOV box for the radar. And, and the flare actually for that matter. Uh, ID controls the display of the ID block which appears on the top right when you move your cursor over a target. Um, you've got the option of full information, just radar information or none. We're going to leave it on full just now. The scale I've already covered. 
Here you've got your IFF range scale for manually initiated IFF interrogations. It's currently at 100 nautical miles, uh, and you can control this with the up and down arrows. Uh, you've got declutter, uh, it doesn't seem to currently do anything. Uh, you've got reset. You've then got the IFF range for the automatic interrogations, currently set at 140 nautical miles. Clicking this will toggle through the different range settings. I'm going to leave it at 80 just now. Expand uh, works whenever you have a launch and steering target and it zooms in the view to show just that target centered in the view uh, and that helps you break out targets that might be in a formation. You've then got the automatic interrogation mode. Clicking this on means it will automatically uh, IFF interrogate the field of view basically forwards uh, and it will do so every 10 seconds. You also have the interrogation mode for the launch and steering target. The default is for this to be boxed, and that means that whatever is the current launch and steering target will be continuously IFF interrogated. And then lastly, you have the option to display the stores page. And this gives you a quick peek at the stores page, and then you can flip back to azimuth and elevation. So those are all of the, uh, that's everything that's, that's shown here in the display. Uh, I'll now demonstrate the employment of this mode. Okay, so uh, I've reset the simulation and we are um, back in azimuth and elevation mode here. I'm going to press sensor select switch to the left and that then gives me control of the azimuth and elevation display. And you can see that now we have some contacts displayed in the azimuth and elevation display. Let's uh, quickly actually completely pause the simulation right now. Uh, so you can see that we have a group here. Now I happen to know that they're friendly, a two ship. We have a four-ship group off the left, I happen to know that they're hostile, and I have a four-ship group off to the right, I also happen to know that they are hostile. And in the azimuth and elevation display, you can see how these targets are displayed. Uh, now, uh, both of these, well, the display is only displaying 40 nautical miles right now. Also, with these RWR symbols, I can I can figure out that these are MiG-29s, but I happen to know that. Um, and you'll notice that all of these are showing as thin staples, and that simply means that they're currently unknown. We only have the top half of the Hafu symbol because I don't have data link today. Um, uh, we're, we'll, we'll cover that in a, in a future video. So let's uh, come out of active pause here, and I'm going to depress sensor select, and we should get an IFF interrogation when I do that. Let me try again. I find it quite hard sometimes to toggle the, the the manual interrogations. Maybe I have to have the cursor over it. Let's try that again. No, nope, I cannot seem to get the IFF interrogation to trigger manually. Let's go into automatic, and there we go, INT. So we just did an IFF interrogation, uh, and you'll notice that all of those staples now uh, switched to being thick staples. So that means they're ambiguous. Uh, and in, in this contact, in this context, that simply means that we didn't get a return from them. Um, so in the absence of other information, we can assume that these are, well, they're definitely bogies, so they are uh, unknown, effectively, or ambiguous in this case. Uh, and uh, we happen to know, because they're showing up as MiG-29s, and MiG-29s are not flown by our side, uh, that these are indeed hostile. You'll note that every 10 seconds when it does the interrogation, you get bars showing up on the azimuth. We'll wait. Yep, there we go. That's showing the extent of the scan that's currently being carried out. So let's move our cursor over one of these targets and depress, and that will immediately make it our launch and steering target. We'll then get the launch and steering interrogations continu continuously, and you'll see that you get a, a much thinner set of azimuth bars showing around that target repeatedly. We then have the information block showing at the top right. Let's quickly pause again so that we can cover that. Uh, information block at the top right is showing us our closure rate, range to the target, and the target's current heading. Note that our heading is displayed down the middle of the display here. Uh, you'll also notice that we actually just got an IFF return for a friendly here. Uh, target number eight, it's showing a, uh, a, a semicircular Hafu symbol and it's colored green. That means that we got a friendly response from that aircraft. Uh, it's a bit further out, which is probably why we didn't get it until now. So you can see my launch and steering target is the leftmost target in this formation. So we have both this top-down view of the target uh, and also the first-person view of the target here. Uh, with it being the launch and steering target, I now also have HUD symbology, but we're not going to cover that today. Uh, that's covered in the BVR uh, radar tutorial and the weapons employment tutorial, so you can refer to that one for all of that information. Um, 
So, um, we, we have this one set as a launch and steering target. Uh, if I move my cursor over him again and depress again, I then get him in single target track. That's confirmed here by Radar STT. So, the other thing that I can do here, uh, when I've got launch and steering or an STT, is I can press sensor select switch to the left. Oh, it's, I need to maybe have the cursor off of him. Okay, that's not working. Um, I was expecting that to put me into the into the FLIR mode, but uh, let's manually toggle by pressing here. We're now in the FLIR mode. We need to make sure that the slave is on the launch and steering and not bore sight. You can bore sight the FLIR or launch and steering it. And then we can click FLIR display, and this will allow us to visually identify this target. Now this target came back as ambiguous, although uh, we do have RWR indications that it is a MiG-29. Let's uh, bring the field of view in quite a bit, and let's zoom a little. And let's see if we can manually identify this target. Uh, there we go. I've got him in FLIR. Uh, I've got him zoomed in all the way that I can at this range. Uh, and, yep, that does look like the silhouette of a MiG-29. I'm fairly happy that I've visually identified that target. Let's go back to azimuth and elevation. Let's flip back to the radar mode. We've actually lost the track of that target. Uh, but in any case, you get the idea. So I can, I can cursor over these targets to, to get my information at the top right, uh, and I can depress TDC to get launch and steering. And that's that's the basic functionality uh, of the mode dis, uh, as kind of intended there. Now I'm going to take the interrogations out of automatic here, and I'm going to try depressing my sensor select switch again and see if I can actually get it to do manual interrogation, because I've been having... There we go, I got it. Manual interrogation there. Oh, actually, no, that was probably the launch and steering that I triggered. If I turn both of these off. Depressing sensor select. No. Nah. I don't know why. I've had that working before. I don't know why that's not working. We'll ignore it for now. Uh, but you get the basic idea. That's the, the main functionality of the display. Uh, you, you know, we have the ability to break out these targets like this. Uh, and yes, actually, my current launch and steering is in this formation. Let's hit expand, and we're going to get a zoomed-in view of just that formation. And we can see my launch and steering target here, and the other targets in the formation, again, all showing as ambiguous. So, pretty handy, uh, you know, pretty useful. And, and you know, to my mind, the visualization of the first person is really, really good. Uh, but then also having the ability to point your FLIR at the target and visually identify it is quite nice. You're then getting some of the functionality of the F-14's uh, system there. One other thing to note is that if you have the cursor not on a target and you depress it, you then get uh, a steering crosshair, and that allows you to actually change where your radar is currently pointed. So this, in effect, allows you to control uh, the radar's elevation setting uh, but it also allows you to slew it left and right as well. So let's make this easier to, to figure out. Let's put it on a one-bar scan, and let's dump the uh, azimuth all the way down to 20 degrees. So we've now got this nice little box. Let's go ahead and point the radar here. There we go. Uh, let's try pointing it over here. And also let's try pointing it at the last known location there of the, the targets and see if we actually pick anything up. There we go. Uh, I've actually picked up some targets there. So it, it also allows you to point the radar in two dimensions in a kind of first-person view as well. Uh, and let's pop this back onto automatic interrogations. And those actually came back as friendly. Super good. So right, just for fun, let's actually set the friendly as a launch and steering. Go to FLIR, display the FLIR, and let's see if we can visually identify this target. We probably can't uh, because of cloud. Uh, but if we were closer, we might actually be able to identify that target. Yeah, no, can't see them at all. They're in cloud right now. Okay, so that is all the functionality, or, well, or most of the functionality, excluding the data link stuff, of the azimuth and elevation display. I hope that you all enjoyed this video. Um, as always, I'm going to give a, a shout-out to uh, Deephack's ground crew. Thank you very much to Channel Wright, Frantic Stone, Storm Kimbari, Byron Farrow, Leo Netzel, Harish Rajan, and Pink Floyd. If you would like to join Deepak's Ground Crew, uh, click the Join button below. It's a, a small monthly fee, and it really is a big help to supporting the channel. All, all, alternatively, please uh, subscribe, like, and comment. That's a really big help to me and to the channel. And uh, I hope you found this useful.
Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you all next time.